So, my, uh, my vids are often kind of disjointed and insane seeming. Um, and oftentimes that leads to people having questions. And that's reasonable. Please ask me questions. And hey, leave me a comment or a like uh, and a subscribe. It helps me in the algorithm. But um, this got me some questions in DMs. Um, and basically, people need more proof of my claims about AI and shit. Now, I did what I normally do, and I fucking sent them my uh, Panopticon Rising article from two years ago. Two, nearly three at this point. Like, I was right about pretty much everything three months ago. As you'll see, because I'm going to do that in this video fucking too. Um, but basically... I uh, brought up my article there, and I also brought up my uh, Great Reset article, but those are really fucking long. So these people are, like, busy, they got families and shit, and, you know, you might have, like, a family or something, too, or, like, plans. So, I figured I would distill part of what was in the other video into another one, about how China's apps... Um, are directly just tests for what they can do in America, um, and how uh, these things are already sort of starting to, like, you know, be proven elsewhere. Um, so the first thing you need to know is that China has been relying on AI for some time now, and that their AI relies on uh, very low-latency technology from things like 5G, and they literally advertise their fucking 5G as a way for surveillance and control to happen. And they, they, they claim that it's smart city technology, where they can fucking, like, watchdog style, just, like, raise pylons to block cars, or close fences to block pedestrians, or, like, see who you are with a helmet, or with a Robocop helmet, as, as many people are calling it, and, or, or, like, glasses or something. Um... And just know who you are and be able to control you. And hey, you know, if if that was ever a thing, um, you know that you would that you would want to be worried about. Uh, maybe we shouldn't be putting wires and chips into people so that they can be Bluetooth, uh, you know, or or whatever the technology this thing would use, um, input output with another device, which is what Neuralink is. Um, because if Neuralink is supposed to be able to see what the other thing is seeing so that it can more adequately help with things like injuries, then maybe it's like, you know, going to be used to augment people in the future so that they can be surveillance people without any obvious devices on them. Because the only obvious thing is hidden under the hair. To just find somebody who grows naturally fluffy hair and say, hey, we'll pay you a fuck of money if you become our bitch for a bit. And they'll be like, okay. So, yeah, anyway, um, let me get to the actual point of the video, which is, I think this pretty much exemplifies it. Um, that the AI technology that's being built is being built for evil fucking purposes and uh, is already being tested for, like, minor infractions um, in France. Not just China, because I'll get to China, too. Some people didn't know what I meant by turning phones red, so I'll be getting to that. Yeah. Uh, but, like, ultimately, let me move my chair. This chair is still broken. If you want to donate to help me get a new one, feel free. Also, there are people who want me to make a wish list, so I guess I'll have one of those available Um next time uh, I do a vlog stream. It'll be available, and you can get me stuff? I don't know. I, I've never had a wish list. I don't know how the fucking thing works. Anyway, the point is, um, I'm moving my chair so that I can fucking put my face in frame uh, and not have to pause the video recording. So this is what I'm talking about. Google AI helps France tax over 20,000 undeclared pools. You know how they're fucking flying around with their fucking trucks? 
and and vans and shit you know how they have their satellites you know how all of this has already been built for many years well you know kind of the kinds of things that it was originally designed for were fucking um government projects if you look into the to the like roots of google maps um it was originally designed to be a satellite mapping system for the fucking government um it was done through keyhole uh you know niantic the same people who your kids are are giving so much of their time and energy to in form of pokemon go players uh or ingress or whatever the thing is at this moment niantic who is a fucking uh cia plant um who helps with like a bunch of government projects that niantic is um is at the roots of google's uh maps app so you know correct me if i'm wrong but that's really fucking bad and i've been saying that it's really fucking bad for a while now especially since the roots of google are like associated with fucking I th if i remember correctly it was like nsa and darpa and shit and you know pay no attention to the fact that allegedly evil governments like saudi arabia are giving and i'm not saying allegedly because i don't agree by the way i'm just saying that people who say they're evil often aren't willing to call out what they do um including the thing that i discussed in the uh, video two videos ago uh which is that biden you know sold five billion dollars of weapons to them well guess where they get the money they get the money from the richest royal family on the planet rich off oil money and shit um and that richest royal family uses the sovereign wealth fund to throw money at companies like Google. To do what? I bet it's not to increase their control and help with the international alliance that's built in order to enslave the planet. I bet it's just for totally innocent reasons, like they want to be able to Google definitions and cat pictures. Yeah! Don't turn my phone red. Uncle Sam, I'm innocent. Fucking fascists. Um, anyway, point is that Google has been helping France tax over 20,000 undeclared pools. Now, I don't care much about pools. Um, I think a lot of the time they're a waste of water, you know? Uh, but you know what else is a waste of water? Big fucking government data centers that require water cooling. They're, they're fucking gigantic water sinks, normally in the middle of fucking nowhere so that they're well hidden, and requiring a massive amount of water to be fucking splipped over to the fucking shit. Those are bad. Those are worse than pools uh, for the environment. Never forget that government is like Worse for the environment than pretty much everyone. If people stopped bellyaching about NFTs, or at least devoted the same amount of energy that they do to NFTs, to stopping government data centers being built, it would save so much energy and water. Same with government bases, same with government anything, really. Massive pollution. But anyway... I digress again. Um, if you look at this, more than 20,000 hidden pools were discovered in France. An unusual experiment allowed French tax officials to discover thousands of undeclared swimming pools by using AI. More than 20,000 hidden pools generated nearly 10 million in new revenue, according to the BBC. They, they could just steal $10 million because... They had an AI that knew how to pick it out, and Google just helped their government do it. It, it you know, it it's it's almost like culture, corporations, um, education is all serving the state in a corporativist manner. You know, it's it's oddly reminiscent of what Mussolini described fascism as. Damn! 
It's not fascism, though it couldn't be. This is democracy or something. Not like they just had a bunch of yellow vest protests. Anyway, don't think too hard. That's illegal. So, the point is, we are pra uh, particularly targeting house extensions like verandas, said Antoine Magan, the deputy director of general public finances to a French outlet. But we have to be sure that the software can find buildings with a large footprint and not the dog kennel or the children's playhouse. So, basically, they worked on this and said, uh, the French newspaper uh, La Parisienne calculated that an average pool measured at 322 square feet is taxed 200 euros per year. Moreover, there was an estimated 3.2 million private pools in the European state in 2020, with a spike in installations during the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. Are you installing something to get really good exercise away from a gym? Isn't there somebody you forgot to ask? Anyway, um, you can see that they're doing it for drought reasons, but they're not willing to eliminate the government data centers, which are really bad for droughts or government anything, really. They're just, you know, grow the government as much as possible. You know, you will own nothing and be happy, but the rest of, the rest of us, like those in power, eh, no, we can own whatever the fuck we want and use it however we want, and uh, you don't have shit to say about it. Double plus good. Very nice. Anyway, point is that they're, they're doing this in France, and they're starting to do it, like, basically everywhere. And I can say this with confidence because they are literally telling kids to scan their rooms before tests so that their remote contact-free learning that I talked about in my uh, talk with um, uh, John Zerzan, that contact-free life is being used to create the acceptance for this sort of control from the fucking beginning. Now, I already, you know, I have, I have Gen Z server members who tell me horror stories about software installed on their, you know, school's computers, like Go Guardian and shit like that, which just says, you can't do X, Y, and Z. We have this software that says you can't do it, even if it's blocking your access to the things you need to do in order to fucking, um, you know, learn or whatever, be our student. Um, which is already fucking evil. But, let's just fucking add that, uh, yeah. Uh, they're telling kids to scan their rooms with an AI and also with just a camera in general. So, that was ruled unconstitutional for now. You know, because... Uh, judges' rulings can be overturned, as we have uh, been bombarded with recently from both sides. Uh, and I mean sides, by the way, because I think the Uniparty is one side, and that even if a third party ekes its way in, it's not going to change jack fucking shit. Um, anyway, point is that this was uh, a thing that they were doing, telling people, uh, kids, that... <laughs> that uh, uh, they need to scan their rooms by using their device's camera to give a 360-degree view of everything around the area in which they're taking a test. Often, this is a personal residence and frequently a private space, like a bedroom. A demonstration of a room scan by Proctorio can be seen here. And so, EFF has been criticizing uh, room scans for a bit. They're one of the People, the, the organizations that cares about privacy to some extent, you know? And, uh, yeah, it's really fucking bad. <laughs> they frequently include gaze monitoring or eye tracking and face detection that claims to determine if the student is focusing on the screen. They gather personally identifiable information, such as, sometimes including scans of government-issued identity documents. And they frequently collect device logs, including IP addresses, records of URLs visited, 
and how long students remain on a particular site or web page. These automated tools are hugely uh, privacy invasive and can easily penalize students who ha don't have control over their surroundings or those with less functional hardware or low speed internet as well as students who for any number of reasons have difficulty maintaining eye contact with their device. It's infuriating. I am ADHD. I flick my eyes from screen to screen and it helps me stay focused. I have so many fucking objects in front of me to help me stay focused. You'll, you'll see me doing it while recording videos like this. I'm flicking my eyes. Like, right now I'm looking at the camera, right? I'm looking at another screen. I'm looking at another uh, window on another screen. I'm looking at this screen. It's fucking fine. I'm looking at my Sonic plush that I uh, got from a friend a while back. You know, I, I just... It's easier to focus if I have things to look at. And I'm bipolar. Going through depressive phases sometimes means that my eyes might close a bit. But you know what? I still get things done. And in my uh, continuation school that I uh, graduated from, I got three years worth of work done that I, you know, in, in one year, because I basically fucked up a lot of my schooling in a uh, school whose environment was hostile to my education, to my actual learning. Um, and just to be clear, they weren't interested in doing anything to cater to my sorts of, like, mental shit. They, they don't care that, like, somebody like me can read, like, multiple scientific papers while listening to you know, uh, videos like covering certain scientific subjects, as long as I'm looking at a speed app or like one of those speed readers where you've got your eye in a line, right? Um, they don't care about that, uh, you know, because that's alternative learning styles and uh, they want people to be forced into their little boxes to be their good little slaves. Um, and so I'm learning much better easier and more now than I did then, even in continuation, but I still did better with an alternative model than I did in fucking, like, the, the mainstream education, right? So, as somebody who is this way, I know for a fact that these apps are fucking evil. But they just tell you to look, like, take your laptop and spin it around like you're a, a fucking surveillance droid. And I'm glad that these were ruled unconstitutional, but that's gonna be temporary and they're gonna find workarounds. <sighs> Either way, the point is that they're getting kids uh, really ready for um, what's coming, which is a world under complete surveillance. Now, um, you know, you know uh, for those of you who've been following me for a while, you know that I've been talking about this subject for a while. Um, so, basically, um, the, the general idea, I've been talking about China's, uh, systems for a while now. This article, Panopticon Rising, is exactly what you need, right? So, I, I go over the fact that China's been using all this technology, that they're going after encryption, that a bunch of shit is happening... And I also go over the fact that China uh, is using 5G surveillance because they fucking are. And actually, let me just look up 5G in this article so that I can find specifically um, <laughs> that they were installing 5G towers in schools when kids weren't going there, like above schools, like on their roofs and shit. And a bunch of parents were protesting, um, you know. And fiber, fiber optic cables to make sure that the 5G towers got the best, uh, the lowest latency. And then, um, you know, there's smart cams in China's 5G surveillance grid. And they rely on that. And can be used anywhere. 
And I fucking, like, I highlighted that in a, in a video on my channel. You know? I, I, I went over this. And so... <laughs> there... <laughs> The, the government totally isn't going to widely implement 5G, a thing used in China in order to mass control the population. It's not going to, you know, be used everywhere. Just like it's used there to enable a facial tracking, biometrics-ready, super-state control grid. Nah. You don't listen to people like me. I'm a terrible person. I'm one of them evil conspiracy theorists. But, oh wait, shit, fuck. Is it starting here? Nah, no, couldn't. Oh, whoops. The Free Thought Project, which is a great publication, uh, had an article on this that proved me right in the same year. Like, it already proved me right, and I made an article about that. Um, Robocop is here. New police helmet scans for COVID-19 and uses facial recognition. Officials in Flint, Michigan have employed a new robotic helmet to ostensibly help police officers identify travelers who are sick with COVID-19. It took 33 years, but RoboCop is now here. Well, not exactly, but the rise of the police state, funded by advancements in technology, have given birth to a HUD-equipped helmet sure to please the most anxious of peace officers. It's called a smart helmet and it can screen airport passengers for COVID-19 virus as well as provide the scanning officer with the vital records. Public officials in Flint, Michigan cannot provide clean drinking water to their residents, but travelers to Bishop International Airport can get a glimpse of the new robotic cop helmets where they're currently deployed. And this was right on the, the heels of like things like Clearview which made it really fucking easy. And that guy got fucked over because he made it too insecure. But guess the fuck what? That guy wasn't the only one fucking doing it. And the government isn't going to stop the government from doing things that help the government. Um, <laughs> you know? So, the smart helmet technology is not limited to temperature body scans, which... Any laser-guided thermometer can do, not in the slightest. Facial recognition software is installed, which can provide the police officer with information related to outstanding warrants. If an individual is identified on a terror watch list or a no-fly list and can read license plates for outstanding warrants, stolen vehicle information, criminal histories, etc., even if you're completely innocent, you will be subject to these scans. Wowos! I was right already, and it, that was two years ago, and it's it's literally two years since the, this article came out as of uh, fucking 11 days ago, and it's literally like, <laughs> that article came out in March, April, May, June, July, August, seven months after mine, right? Um, I was right, I'm still right, and... Here's what I mean by turning phones red. Chinese authorities are using COVID tracking app to thwart protesters. Hey, that's bad, isn't it? That isn't good. So, during the early months of the pandemic, the Chinese government developed a color-coded smartphone app to track the movement of people in its efforts to control the spread of COVID-19 and implemented zero-COVID policy. This week, however, media reports surfaced that authorities in Zhengzhou, the capital of Henan province, were now using the required codes to restrict the movement of people upset because local banks had frozen their deposits. Hundreds of depositors who had lost access to their funds had planned to travel to Zhengzhou on Monday only to find that their health codes had suddenly turned red. Health codes had suddenly turned red. This meant they couldn't travel and the protest fizzled. The red code seemed to target only depositors, according to CNN. VOA Mandarin asked China's foreign ministry for comment on the government's alleged new use for the app, but received no fucking comment. 
The fucking state-run Global Times ran an editorial on Tuesday saying, quote, the health code is a technical means designed to make the public compromise some pers personal information rights to comply with the needs of society's public health security. It can only be used for epidemic prevention purposes. It is the responsibility of the relevant authorities to protect the privacy of citizens to the greatest extent during the epidemic prevention process. No! That's not what it is at all. That's propaganda. But that doesn't fucking matter. Because it, it was never for that. It was always for control. And the virus was always just an excuse to test control methods. Because what better way to test how to treat people like cattle than to code them and give them fucking tracking apps that can corral them if you want. Fuck! Like, it was so obvious to begin with. And, and, and I don't understand how more people weren't this upset to begin with. But hey, I just figured I'd put out this video and let y'all know that it's really fucking bad and not at all good. Because guess what? That's what it is. And now I'm 25 minutes into an explanation that should, should let you flip off the establishment, maybe. Just a little bit, like a little half-mast middle finger, you know? Can we at least get that? And I'm not, like, insulting the people who sent me the messages either. I'm mostly just venting because yet again, yet a fucking again, a thing that I said uh, has been proven right over and over and over for years, and still I have people who don't know about it um, or who don't believe me. So... I would rather have this video out there that I can just send to these people so that they can then uh, choose to like, share, and subscribe, and comment and shit if they want to, and also potentially support my content or, you know, just realize that the system is fundamentally anti-human and uh, start the process of getting the psychology necessary to smash the fucking state.